$500 small blind, $1,000 big blind, and a $2,000 straddle combined with a $200 ante. This is one of the, if not the highest stakes hold'em game that can be played online. So in this hand, we'll see two of the best online cash game players. Marcus Lykonen, aka Market Boyfriend on PokerStars, taking on no other than the human solver himself, Linus Love. After going through the hand, we will take a look into the game theoretical background behind the place and come up with four simple takeaways that you can implement into your own game at your own Fight. states. Folded to him in the small blind, Marco Boyfin raises to 7.5k and Linus calls in a straddle. The flop comes 3 4 5 rainbow and Marco Boyfin check raises Linus's bet. Linus calls, the turn is the jack of diamonds and Marco Boyfin continues with a half pot barrel. Linus calls again, the river brings an offsuit 3, pairing the board and after tanking for a while, Marco Boyfin goes all in, shoving a bit over 50k effectively into the $137,000 pot. Linus snap calls and shows 6-7 off for the nut straight, while Marco Boyfin has pocket 8s. Alright, stop, what are your thoughts right now? A, uh, but I, I don't yeah. even. I don't B, wow, this is a nice thin value bet. Or C, why is he bluffing with pocket eights? To shed some light on the situation, let's see what the solver has to say about this. Of course, just like when we're playing a hand ourselves, we have to make sure that our preflop foundation is solid. Therefore, I've run a simulation and simple preflop for the exact blind structure of this game. We can see that the GTO strategy for the small blind will consist of raises as well as calls, with Marco Boyfin's actual hand pocket eights being mostly a raise. The straddle, or Linus in the spot, will have quite the wide calling range. His raising range, however, is rather narrow and very polar. Only 3 bending 10s plus and ace queen plus for value, and adding mostly offsuited bluffs. His actual hand, 6-7 offsuit, is a pure call alongside other offsuited connectors. Now for the post-flop analysis, we will take a look at the results from the post-flop solver program PO Solver. We can see that following GTO, the small blind, or out of position, is checking almost his entire range on the flop. As the flop is low and connected, it improves a big part of the straddles or in positions pre-flop calling range, which heavily consists of low cards. In contrary, out of position's most frequent holdings are high cards, which do not connect at all with this board texture. So while in position has all combinations of flopped sets and straights in this range, out of position only has a limited amount of these combinations. If if we give in position the option to bet both 30% pot and 50% pot when checked to, it mostly prefers to bet 30%. Linus's hand 6-7 still mixes in some half pot sizings. Now against this bet, out of position will only call most of his hands. However, we see that the hands that do want to check raise are mostly mid pocket pairs, mixing in some 7x and 6x as bluffs. These middling pocket pairs profit a lot from protecting against imposition's high-end middling cards that stab the flop and will fold against the race. At the same time, they are still good enough to get called by worse hands, as imposition also has a lot of single pair hands and straight draws in this range. On the turn, we can see that the solver doesn't actually like betting pocket eights. However, the difference in EV is rather small, only being about half a big blind. Furthermore, other hands in this hand class, which is middling pocket pairs, actually like to bet, such as pocket 9s, pocket 10s, and even pocket 7s, having additional equity because it also has a gutshot straight draw. Facing this bet, Linus is not straight, just wants to purely call. But also pay attention to what his range wants to do with some of his other strong hands, like top pair or even two pair and sets. This will have a big impact going into the river and for out of position to decide on his action. A lot of these hands want to play the turn aggressively and shove all in to protect against out of position straight and flush draws, which he still has a lot of. So when going into the river, which is a three of clubs, Marco Boyfin can assume the following things. One, Linus's preflop range is very wide, which still makes him have a a lot of one pair hands on this run out. Two, Linus doesn't have a lot of jack x in his range because he mostly doesn't bet call them on the flop. Even of those jack x that he does bet call on the flop, he's shoving a lot of them on the turn alongside other very strong hands. Of course this doesn't mean that Linus has no nut hands left, but of those hands that are only one pair, he has to call quite many, or otherwise Marco Boyfin would be printing money with his bluffs.
So accordingly, out of position does indeed choose to shove pocket 6s and better, including pocket 8s, given he chose to bet on a turn. In conclusion, Marco Boyfin was indeed value betting. Knowing that Linus is maybe the best game theoretical player, he probably figured Linus wouldn't simply fold all of his one pair bluff catchers, as Marco Boyfin could easily still have a lot of 6x and 7x bluffs in his range. So even though he ran into one of Linus's best holdings this time, he didn't shy away from potentially losing his entire stacks and made a play that is very much confirmed by GTO. And more important than whether you win a specific hand or not is knowing why you are making a certain play, as it will not only make you more money in the long run, but also lets you handle a potential loss confidently. To sum it up, what can we learn from this hand and what can you implement into your own game even if you are not playing 100k in L? 1. Know your own and your opponent's most likely range going to the flop. Is this a spot where ranges are generally wide or rather tight? Knowing this will have one of the biggest impacts for the rest of the hand. 2. Use aggression to prevent your opponent from realizing their equity with too many hands. Oftentimes it feels easier and safer to take the passive line because it keeps the pot smaller, when in fact being aggressive is often even safer as you can end and win the hand right there. 3. Pay attention if certain hands are even in your opponent's range given the specific line. Especially on lower stakes, many players tend to fast play their stronger hands on wet boards when they are afraid of some scary runouts, thus leaving only weaker hands in their range when they just call. And 4. Even though your opponent will have a better hand some of the time, it doesn't mean that you can't value bet. When your opponent's range is wide, unbalanced towards weaker hands, or your opponent simply has a tendency to call down lightly, it is often a good idea to value bet thinly, even if you might frequently face a better hand. Now, if you'd like to watch more videos like this, I suggest you to watch this one.